All right, today we have kind of the perfect storm of chat suggestions and my own challenges. I have a couple of daily missions. Oh yes, Ben's War Cry is being redeemed in chat. If you guys ever want to be a, a part of the madness, you know, Twitch link down below where I record these. I have two Outlander missions to do, and I was telling chat that I wanted to record a video while I was still in the mood for it, but I, I really wanted to get these Outlander challenges done today. And somebody suggested Teddy, which is, I say a perfect storm because I actually wanted to run Cyberclops earlier in Ventures. We had a smokescreen survivor mission. I thought actually Cyberclops would be great with this. He's got Shock Tower, he's got Teddy, he's got Seismic Smash, a great hero for me feeling lazy right now. But somebody suggested that we use him in the 160s to demonstrate kind of how he falls off in the end. I've had a lot of very stark Cyberclops defenders on my channel before, and I've always been outspoken against him not because he's bad but i feel like he's overrated and today we're gonna find out today so here's what's the, here's what the plan is all right we got cyberclops in the lead basically he makes your teddy energy and he does 20 percent chances at nearby enemies for 116 percent damage dealt meaning every five shots in a perfect world <laughs> it's probability so it's not guaranteed but in a perfect world every five shots it'll zap to an extra target for more damage than usual which is kind of two for one and that's a pretty good bonus but the serious addition is that teddy deals energy damage the reason that's important is because against elemental enemies your physical teddy will do half damage energy will do 75 percent so it's kind of a 25 percent damage bonus to elemental targets and in the high zones like the 160s you will be encountering lots of them happy holidays is almost a necessity because this is an ability loadout we need abilities to be spanned as much as possible it's about as simple as that fragment generation is also an unfortunate necessity because in order to get teddy's cooldown as low as possible we're going to need to use a fragment and every 39 eliminations giving us that is going to be nice i believe that stacks with traps if i'm wrong then boohoo but if so then great that can actually help out a little bit because i think we're going to need traps and it's worth mentioning that cyberclops that zapping occurs on energy damage which includes traps so if you put down uh let's see energy traps like the ceiling electric field or the wall dynamo then that can actually zap and do extra damage kind of a nice bonus if you ask me then we got under warranty because she's kind of great you have a 100 percent crit chance against new targets so you start off every single target with a crit and yeah teddy can crit so can minigun so can lefty and righty kind of cool i have a short on my channel where i pop totally rocking out with a completely normal non-lefty and righty build but then i use lefty and righty versus a mini boss it was insane enough to make a short out of it so it's actually a really good bonus and then when it malfunctions which it has a five percent chance to do it'll trigger a bunch of new targets all the way and then like for a few seconds and then it'll actually uh get a new target every single time so you're just critting constantly then we got bear with me another necessity i am using metal team leader she was the original starter pack from forever ago uh, it's the exact same bonus as i can't remember their names but i'm showing them on screen jingle jess and the other guy enforcer grizzly i remembered while recording but she's also slightly pay to win in that she has a slightly higher hero ability damage so i supercharge her it's not much it's not pay to win i'm being facetious but four extra seconds is important because we don't want to have Teddy out of the field. We want it on the field as much as possible within reason. That's the reason I'm not using Impossibility Matrix. If I go and find him real quick, uh, let me see if we can find his name. Pressing charges is the one I'm replacing. Old Glory AC gives you an extra 10% cooldown, which is kind of nice. However, that means I will be giving up the chick that I just replaced, Gumshoe. She gives you a 30% damage bonus to your Fragment abilities. This is a bit misleading because Fragment abilities includes Teddy and Shock Tower, but they do not need to use a Fragment in order to get that bonus. So she is a static 30% buff to your Shock Tower and Teddy at all times. If you're running Cyberclops, Gumshoe is a must grab hero from the Art Deco section. Cannot recommend her higher uh, or more. Higher enough? <laughs> Can't recommend her anymore. Trailblazer Kin, also 30% damage to the I mean, I mean, what else is it? It's just a flat Teddy bonus. How could you not? So that's our build. Let's hop in game and just see how it does in the end game. All right. Got a fragment just to get things started. Let's just simply see how it does versus regular enemies. Yeah, that's. um, uh, Yeah. <laughs> so when I talk crap about Cyberclops all the time, it's because of this. Like, I know he's doing well, but in a regular defense, that is a long time to kill. And it's it's a little a little much to deal with. In fact, I uh, didn't have enough enemies to kill there, but you can see the cooldown's pretty good, actually. I got about five seconds on the timer when it went away. So let's just trigger an encampment. Uh, I'm not gonna quite have my uh, cooldown back, but can it actually kill a nurse? I actually don't know. Let me help it out. Let me use my whole loadout, all of my abilities. I wanna give him his best, you know, do some good damage. Seismic Smash is actually pretty strong, but clearly not enough. And my Teddy is about to go, oh, no, it's not, no, it's not. I think I have time. 
Um, I, yeah, it's just completely stalled. My Teddy is completely useless with a nurse on the field. Although the uh, Seismic Smash is doing pretty good damage. It's actually a pretty strong ability, and the nurses are just completely negating it. So if I'm going to have any chance with this build, I should probably get a nurse killer. And I, for some reason, do not have any Santa's Little Helpers crafted. So I should probably be using an energy weapon, but I want to do more damage. I've been using the jack launch just because I keep running nature missions, but this is the first time in a while I have a fire mission. Let's go find another encampment, see how this does. All right, we got another encampment. We got a, a big super encampment here. Let's see here. I need to get safe. This is not good. All right. Drop the shock tower, which is actually doing really good damage. Shock tower is just cleaning up, and that is what I like to see. I'm hoping that with the teammates bases down and ooh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh no, I'm throwing. I'm throwing. Uh, yeah, trying that encampment again. What I was saying is, when my teammates' bases are down and the defense is going, I feel like this will just be a lot of free and extra damage that'll hopefully go a long way. Um, yeah, it's actually really good, clearing out the crowd like that, and I, uh, kinda dig it. Let me just... Oh, get that down. It's gonna take a lot of practice for me to not die. Thank you for the teammate support, but you can see the damage is... It's alright. It's not... Too bad. Uh, it's going to need a little help versus the uh, bigger targets. That's why I brought the Storm King Scourge. Figured I might as well use some energy weapon to, to give me some support here. Throw down the Teddy. How much damage is that going to do? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's more of a crowd clearer, free damage kind of weapon. I feel like this loadout will be best used if I put down some traps to get fragments and uh, wait for my teammates' base to be down. All right, while we wait for the mission to start, this is kind of what we got going on. I didn't want to do heavy trapping, so I put all of about eight electric fields on this, uh, so, or what is or this is east side. Then we got only about five on this side, and these are all placed by me. I want to get as many fragments as I can, and I don't think it'll be easy to demonstrate this, but the sin electric field should sometimes zap an extra time. It's really hard to observe, but it does happen, so kind of a nice bonus. I am not going to be able to kill these guys with my teddy, but I want to observe the teddy doing some damage. It's still prioritizing the big target, which is not great. You can see the big damage here is is not coming from me. It's, um, I don't know. I feel like in the midst of a bunch of traps doing the bulk of the damage and teammates helping out, the teddy is all right. I'm currently waiting with my shock tower because I want to use the fragment on my teddy. And I am actually getting fragment generation going on here. So we can actually put down a shock tower, which will have a super high impact. Hopefully stagger the smasher, which is great. And, uh, you know, it's not just teddy. You know, I got my seismic smash as well. I feel like I'd be doing my teddy loadout dirty if I didn't at least help a little bit here. But you could say it's it's not... A powerhouse. This this is the kind of thing I think about when people defend uh, Teddy builds to me. I'm like, mm, they're not incredible. I got a couple of extra kills there just to get my my fragment. I really want to show like how good it's doing. It, it's actually pretty decent against normal enemies. If you're feeling lazy and you're putting traps down, Teddy is really really good at cleaning up whatever remains. You know, Teddy is really good at just taking care of the enemies that your trap tunnels couldn't quite finish off, but. As a main DPS, I've had some outrageous arguments in my comments. I've had people say that I'll out damage you no matter what if I ran Teddy. Cyberclops is easy, you don't even need to play the game. I'm like, what missions are you running? Are you like, not out of candy yet or something? Because when it gets to the hard missions, when it gets to the real game, it's just not that simple. Um, you can see it's useless against the Smasher. Pretty alright against crowd clearing, but basic enemies are not my benchmark. I feel like basic, normal husky husks like these guys are not the enemies you'd normally be struggling to kill. So cleaning them up is something any loadout can do. The chain lightning on the vacuum tube bow would clean up all of them in one shot. It's just like, you know, it is free damage though. If you're ever low on materials and you need something casual and you're willing to trap to make up the, the slack, Teddy's actually a pretty solid pick. That's actually why I said I wanted to use it in my Ventures missions earlier. We were running a survivor mission, and I thought it would be really good to have a Teddy loadout active so I could just get some easy kills. Love lobbers are also a thing right now, so here's what's going on there. Uh, let me explain the Teddy build first before I complain about Love Lobbers. So I thought it would be a really nice build that's just universal. I can bring my Teddy to anywhere on the map because we're going to be going all over the place to save survivors. It'll be something that can give me consistent damage output in a smokescreen mission where abilities and melee weapons are what you're going to want to use. And setting up traps doesn't really make sense for survivors because you're only defending them for about 30 seconds and you're not going to use up your trap durability. Uh, Tushi, I think we're ready for the next wave right away. I appreciate it. Hey, look at that. Get my daily challenge done on the left. So I figured in that case... 
Teddy, Cyberclops, would be an excellent solution. That would be the perfect pick. Unfortunately, he wasn't an expedition. So this is me kind of getting my Cyberclops desire out. But as a primary DPS, it's not really that good. And it's not like we're going to be able to look at my damage at the end of the mission, because as you can see, I put down most of the team's traps. And my teammates letting me put traps down is no indication of how good Teddy can be. But you can see, I am actually forming my opinion as we watch this, because I am no Cyberclops stern defender. And that's probably not going to change after this video. But I can at least see the merit that he can be an easy... 30% of the team's damage, maybe, probably less, but it's not too bad to just clean up the regular enemies and then maybe my teammates can take out the smashers. If you've got synergy like that, that can work. In fact, I just recorded, not, no, I don't think I recorded this. It was in the venture session where we were, our team was running three constructors and one guy had diecast Jonesy. His one job for the entire team, for the entire game, was to just take out the mini bosses and he did an excellent job with that. And it could be the, the inverse with this, you know? If you got teammates who are running base and putting traps down, you as Teddy can just kind of clean up whatever gets through the tunnels. And um, yeah, I don't think a cleanup build is deserving of a ton of praise, but I, I can at least kind of get it. So yeah, for like locking down this tunnel, you can see we barely have any traps. But with my teammates being a little bored and me just cleaning up here and there, nothing's getting through. So yeah, I don't know if this is conclusive or anything. The video's not done or anything, but I just figured this would be a, uh, a fun excuse to pull out a bill that I've heard a lot about and do I not have a discharge oh my god I just have 144 is being in weird positions uh, there we go is that gonna do any damage whatsoever I'm uh, currently not blown away by it oh it's actually not charging up typical discharger right yeah doesn't even look like it's charging uh, let's just see if we can get that teddy down fragment generation is actually doing pretty well uh, the traps do affect it which is really nice Archer confirmed that in between games there while I was not recording so yeah that's kind of nice to know that you can get those extra fragments just from your traps but um, the Teddy alone is certainly not going to be getting 39 eliminations in a 160. You're going to need a little bit of help to, uh, to get that going. That's why I'm using the Storm King Scourge. I think it's a perfect weapon. Super strong energy weapon that can do great crowd clearing. That will be more than enough to get those fragments nice and set up. You can see I'm at zero right now in the bottom right there. And all I need is just a few more kills in between. It's like the Teddy and my traps are almost always getting... Anywhere between 20 plus, 20 to 30 actual uh, fragments in, while the teddy is up. And then just a few more kills is all I need to top it off. Because fragments are a huge deal. It's the difference between waiting like 20 seconds and 5. Those are not specific numbers. But I saw earlier in the video my teddy went away and I had about, you know, 20 seconds left over. And now with the fragment active, I only get about 8 second cooldown. So real quick here, I can just get a couple more kills. I'm at 0, should be nice and close. I don't actually know what I'm at. It'd be kind of cool if there's a counter, but maybe it doesn't matter. There we go. One more fragment throw it down and see how it goes so yeah I'm surprised to say that I'm weirdly impressed the build needs a lot of help obviously I'm using all of my abilities I got a really kitted out loadout here I have a very strong team and they are playing very much support nurses still shut this build down completely but if you play it right and you're not just lazily watching your teddy you're using all your abilities you're shooting your strong mythic weapon that's supercharged and you've got traps down <gasps> With all of that combined, yeah, I guess, I guess Cyberclops is, is kind of good. Um, I think that's too many asterisks for me to be impressed and to consider Teddy strong. Um, I, I guess, yeah, he's viable in the 160s, I guess, but uh, certainly not my top pick. You know, I, I really upset a lot of people in my Outlander tier list, link to that down below, when I did not put Teddy in S tier, or uh, Cyberclops in S tier. I put him in high A tier, and I made so many people upset. And if you're one of those people, maybe you can understand my criteria. I feel like in the highest level missions like this, an S tier hero should be kicking ass, and that is just not what we're seeing. He did pretty okay at best, so... Maybe that puts some of that to rest. Maybe you guys can understand a bit more where I'm coming from. If I got this video totally wrong and I totally didn't do it right and Cyberclops is way better than that, bro, then leave a comment. I'm happy to make another one of these. But for now, I'm just going to leave you with the fact that apparently Tucci and Storm God did 2,964 and 2,965 damage. And then even Archer was like 80 damage away from that. I think that's a pretty cool coincidence. It's unrelated to the video, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe, Twitch link down below. See you guys in the next one, and uh, yeah, take it easy. <laughs>